he isn't to hate them. It's to learn their sneaky ways. Speaking of sneaky ways and abortion, let's watch Jordan Peterson embarrass himself in front of uh, Don Jr. Like, okay, so this is the problem with wizardry. When you're when you're around non people that aren't susceptible to it, it it looks so ridiculous. And I've been the guy that's like all about Peterson in the very beginning, just because I was going through a weird time in my life. I have to believe I normally want to fall in for the bullshit, but like. Watch Peterson say absolutely nothing about abortion to two strong males and watch their reaction. It, it goes, it's only three minutes long, but it feels like forever. Um, just watch this shit. It's it just, he's, he's literally a wizard. <laughs> just watch, oh, this will, this will be a fairly eye opening. And for those of you that are still under the spell. I was in Washington a week ago and I was thinking, we were talking about how to bring people together across the house divide because the house is extraordinarily divided now and people aren't talking and I thought it would be very interesting. Well, abortion is obviously a key issue, but it's one that's unbelievably contentious. But one of the things I thought about with regards to the abortion issue is that it's by the time you're talking about abortion, you're probably having the wrong conversation, which is why it's so deeply polarized, right? There's a sequence of bad decisions that have already occurred by the time that's Wait, the He's talking to people that are like, oh yeah, we don't, we, we're against abortion. Like he will never say what he feels on anything. And he's just like, it's all bullshit. There's a, and he, and he, like watches, I think he's teetering on a real meltdown because he's not reading the crowd. Like no one's responding to him. And one of the things you see that's really quite interesting, and, and I just started to think about it this way in this last week or so, is that, you know, the, the traditional right, the conservative types, are pushing quite hard and, and always have for the encapsulation of sexual behavior within a fairly traditional structured marriage, right? But you know, you're seeing sexual taboos. These sexual taboos are very common across cultures, but you're seeing the same thing emerge on the left in a completely different form. Because on the one hand, especially the radical leftist types, their basic claim is that anything goes. When you see it in an environment that isn't like lobster bib guys, like people that worship him, it's so stupid. Like he's just going on and on about how abortion is subjective and we have to find middle ground. Like the people he's talking to are like, oh no, it's 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 immoral and just wrong. Just watch this. Right, but, but at the same time, they're putting forward these affirmative consent regulations and laws in many states. And they're insisting that we live in the middle of a rape culture and that they're acting as if sex is a very volatile and dangerous enterprise, which actually happens to be the case. And so there's, even though th that issue is extraordinarily tense, partly because people on the left, I would say, would like to let a thousand flowers bloom, let's say, there is an accruing agreement that there's some deep discussion that has to be had about sexual morality. Mm -hmm. And that's a place where despite the... Dis there's an accruing agreement that there's a, a fundamental need to have a conversation about sexual morality. Uh, what? And, and, and there's this crazy thing happening where people act like you're not smart enough to understand that. That's intentionally awful wording and writing. That doesn't mean anything. Differences that some sort of bipartisan discussion might occur. It's like obviously people are very upset about the manner in which sexual activity is occurring among, especially among young people. They're upset on the left and they're upset on the right. So it would be well. So that's one of the things I thought I might Wait. I might discuss today. I think that would be. Yeah, it's how to encapsulate it. I mean, and it's partly, I think it's partly also- He's not done yet. And these dudes are giving, like, they're giving uh, nonverbal and like crazy feedback that he's talking too much. And he doesn't read it at all. He's blind to the needs and wants of other people. And that's what happens when you practice too much wizardry. When you practice too much wizardry, you're alone in your own head. You think that you can say and do anything and anyone will do anything. Everyone is acting really fucking weird. And, and people that, um, you know, like look and feel and understand other people and are saying things that are true, uh, they understand that. He do, he's not stopping. ...of the fact that 
we haven't adapted to the birth control pill yet. You know, it was a major technological revolution, the birth control pill, and it's only been 50 years, and we haven't figured out what it means for women to have control over the reproductive function, or what the consequences should that, should, what, are the, what the consequences of that should be socially. The leftist types, of, especially in the 60s, thought you could just blow some sexual morality apart completely, because now people were free to do what they want. But that isn't working. There's a there's a backlash against that on the left as well. So, so it would be, well, it would be fun and necessary to think fun. It would be engaging and necessary to think that through because maybe there's some room for a real discussion. Did you see that? He pretended that he was censoring himself and being more honest. But he's like, fun. And he's like, ah, oh, not, fu not fun. I mean, he, nothing he's saying means anything. Like, watch what he does with this word fun. He's trying to make it seem like his words are so pre precise. He's talking about abortion, right? And he's, he's, he's like making it meaningless. And he's talking to people that are like, buddy, like we don't fall for this shit. Well, it would be fun and necessary to think fun. It would be engaging and necessary to way, think. One of the reasons he's pulling out all his wizard stops is because he's around powerful people. And he's trying to just dazzle the shit out of them. Like, and there's, and that's, I, I try, I, I have a story where I did that once. Uh, I was a kid and it was way not awful like what he's doing. But I have a, I have a story I'll tell you guys about embarrassing myself. That through, because maybe there's some room for a real discussion about that. So I, I want a lot of your speech today to be questions, if you can, because this, aud okay. this audience would love. How much of it? 70%. All possible. right. So how long do you want me to talk? I think we have you slated for <laughs> quite a long time. I understand that Charlie Kirk is mocking him. He was like, how about you slate all of it for questions? Like 70%. They're like, how long? He's like, quite, quite a long time. Like, he's being nice. Like, Charlie Kirk was being, like, like polite. But he's trying to, he's screaming with subtlety. Like, dude, stop talking. And, and the more this, the more this, like, time will go on, the more my opinion on him will be obvious. That's the thing about like being honest and having people get real pissed at you. Like people get so mad at me about the Peterson thing still. There will come a time when what I like my opinion on him is you like obvious as fuck. And it's already happening. Like when you watch that video, I I'd, even as like lobster fans, like even as lobster bibs, guys, I'm dying to hear your take on that. You know, like what are you supposed to say to that? It's like, oh, you don't understand what he's saying. He's so intellectual, like, he's really connecting. It doesn't get worse. I'll tell you one time when um, you're a crowd expert, I trust you. Yeah, I'm a person expert. I, I really am. It's like, like, I hire plumbers and carpenters and stuff because I suck at all that. You, people have to understand, I'm like one of the elite in the field I'm discussing. Just really skilled at what I'm talking about. And so when people dismiss that, when they would hire a plumber, like that's the equivalent of being like, of just thinking you can redo the electric in your house and then an electrician, what he thinks is retarded. Like, it's just that crazy. It's like, what is my, what is my motivation when people are like, oh, you're just jealous. That, that to me is madness. I'll tell you when, it, when that happened to me once, though. So Adam Sandler was always my hero growing up when it came to comedy because he did musical comedy and, like, opera man and shit because my dad sang opera. So why is it some, something in there is real smoky? And my dad sang opera and shit, so it was like it kind of bridged the gap between me and my dad, like, generationally. And I just always thought he was a great dude. And, um, and when I went to L.A., I, he saw me do stand-up pretty early on, and he uh, – we became buddies because he thought I was really funny and he put me in some movies and shit. But like when I was 24, I was opening for Nick Swartz in, in uh, Tempe, Arizona. And, uh, and he's like, yo, uh, he's like, I think Chris Rock was there, but he's like, yo, Sandler, Kevin James, and, and some dudes are, are flying out for the show. Uh, and of course I was like, you know, he'd already seen me, but I, I just really wanted to impress him. And so I do my set. And I, um, you know, I, I crushed pretty hard. 
And then I get off stage and I find out they just got there, right? So I proceed to take like five full minutes, which as you could just see from that Jordan Peterson situation is a crazy long time to talk without other people talking. And I like recapped my jokes to Sandler and, and, and Kevin and those guys. Cause I was like, I was so bummed that they didn't get to see my jokes. Cause in my head, I was like, they're going to love them. And in the green room, I'm just recapping my jokes. And later I felt so fucking stupid. Cause it was like, so annoying to these guys. Like now that I'm like a, a more established comedian, I've done it so much. It's like, I can't imagine the hell they were in to have just a dude that they like, liked. they thought I was funny and shit, but like, I just kind of cornered them and told them all my jokes. And they just were staring at me and just trying to be polite, but it was like this Charlie Kirk shit. And I didn't have the read cause I'd had a couple beers and I was like, just so like in my head, I had already like impressed everybody with my great jokes. And so I'm watching Jordan Peterson. And I'm like, okay, I was 24 around my childhood hero. Like I was around Adam Sandler who had just put me in a movie. And uh, I really, really, really wanted to impress him with humor. He's like 55 trying to like muddy the waters around abortion to like these young dudes with power and he's making a fucking ass of himself. And I'm sure they would be like, oh no, Jordan Peterson's great. You know that, but you can read it. Like there's like unspoken language where those dudes were literally just like doing subtle dude language of like, hey, lobster guy, relax. And how do you not learn that by 55? And you ask yourself that question and, and then you realize it's, it's ego. It's like in his mind, he's like, these dudes are dying to hear what the fucking big lobster has to say. I'm going to do a little pinch pinch. And you know, Dave Rubin is such a yes man. He's probably just on the road all the time with a guy being like, you're the best lobster in the whole wide world. I'll put on a bib right now. Um, so that's all I had to say about that. They were like, what the fuck is he saying? Oh, I know. And it's one thing if you're talking about like socialism or like Solzhenitsyn or some shit, he's talking about abortion. It's the most cut and dry moral issue, especially for a dude like Charlie Kirk. Like there is no, like everything he's saying is insane. Chris, Chris Wilde just said, please stop. Are you talking about Peterson or me? Cause you're about to get banned, obviously. Open the flu. I don't know what a flu is, bro. This is a gift from my buddy. My, my neighbor gave me th this thing. I, I'm not fully aware how it works. I kind of assembled the, there we go. We're firing it up. It's the wood, man. It's like something, like this wood's real smoky. It's fine. Dude, he's obsessed with lobsters. Who the fuck, lobsters are the cockroaches of the sea. No one ate, you know lobsters were fed to prisoners until 